Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I hope you're all doing very well. So earlier today, the Hollywood Foreign Press Association announced the nominees for the 2023 Golden Globes. And as is tradition here in this channel, I'm going to be breaking down my thoughts, feelings, and reactions uh, to the nominees lists for the TV categories. I've already filmed my video tackling the movie categories and who I think will win in those categories as well as who I would prefer to see when <laughs> so if you haven't seen that video already you can go ahead and check it out on my channel but here we are going to be tackling the tv show categories which in a lot of ways I'm more excited about because guess what I've actually seen a lot of these <laughs> like unfortunately I haven't gotten a chance to check out as many films as I wanted to this year uh, despite my best efforts but when it comes to the tv shows I'm, just, I'm your girl <laughs> I am your girl maybe I should just change my name to jeans tv show chats because i am a pro when it comes to catching up on these shows so i'm really excited to delve into my thoughts on the nominees list for these categories but before we get into all of that good stuff as per usual if you haven't already please be sure to subscribe to my channel and make sure you turn on your notifications so that you can be told when i upload next including a very very exciting video that's coming this sunday the 18th of december and that will be the genie awards the very first annual possibly <laughs> genie awards i'm going to be diving into my own categories with my own nominees and you guys can go ahead and watch it as it uh, premieres on sunday and we'll be chatting um in the live chat box hopefully i don't know how any of this works pray for me <laughs> but i can't wait to finally uh put up the video because it's something that i've wanted to do for years now and i'm finally doing it I'm so excited I'm going to be working on this all week long and I hope you guys enjoy so if you haven't already be sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications so that you don't miss out okay so now without further ado guys let's get into my thoughts feelings reactions predictions for the Golden Globes 2023 nominees list television edition okay so to start us off we have the first category which is best actress in a drama series and here the nominees are Emma Dunn for House of the Dragon, Laura Linney for Ozark, Imelda Staunton for The Crown, Hilary Swank for Alaska Daily and Zendaya for Euphoria. So I have to say overall I'm not overly surprised or really impressed by this nominees list. Not that the ladies have done a bad job or anything, it's just because this is like the typical thing that you would expect from a Golden Globes nominees list, right? Like you have The Crown on there, you know, you have, <laughs> of course, you do <laughs> uh, even though it doesn't deserve to be there let's discuss listen I have a particular loyalty to Imelda Staunton because she went to the same secondary school as me so like mm, you can't come for auntie okay but uh, I would have to say of the three ladies that have portrayed Queen Liz in the crown unfortunately she was my least favorite like unfortunately her character just disappeared in the background um in exchange for you know Charles kind of coming to the forefront in the the last season so so I just, I don't know if she needs to be on this list, quite frankly, especially considering how many amazing alternatives uh, could have been featured here instead. But because The Crown has that prestigious title and reputation, I think it kind of has that like shortcut into awards season, which I think is a shame when you have other actors who are more deserving of this slot. And I don't think it, it best represents, you know, the best actresses, you know, the best performances that we have gotten this year. And then next we have Laura Linney, who's also nominated here for the last season of Ozark. I would absolutely agree with that one, actually. I think she was phenomenal in all of Ozark, but particularly as we got to the end where her character just became the worst. <laughs> like she was wrapped up in this criminal underground of a world and she just became the worst. And I think Laura Linney just killed it in this role. Like she really was incredible. And I think it's right that she gets this nomination for the final season season of the show um, because she killed it to the very end. Hilary Swank in Alaska Daily, that's a bit of a surprise to me and I think it's a surprise to most of the awards pundits but again she's a well-known actress, she has the name recognition and that's what the Hollywood Foreign Press Association always looks for whether it be in the project or in the actors or the you know filmmakers involved with that project. That's what they want um, as part of their ceremony so Hilary Swank is here for some reason. 
<laughs> even though I've never heard of this show Alaska Daily let me know if you guys enjoyed Alaska Daily there'll always be one person in my comments that's like Jean Alaska Daily is phenomenal or whatever show I'm talking about so let me know if you actually watched it Zendaya for Euphoria fine I'm not gonna say anything <laughs> I'm not saying anything about Zendaya's nomination here because I don't want to get dragged quite frankly I don't watch Euphoria so that's why I don't have any personal feelings towards her nomination you know good for her you know go off sis she won her second Emmy so she'll probably take home the award honestly um just looking at the rest of the cast and well done <laughs> I still have no interest in watching Euphoria, but well done Zendaya, like good for her. <laughs> and then finally we have Emma Darcy for House of the Dragon. This was interesting to me because Emma Darcy identifies as non-binary. So I was surprised to see them be featured in this category, you know, the best actress category. And I think this speaks to an issue when it comes to how these shows are formatted, where they do very much subscribe to the gender binary of actor and actress. Um, so someone like Emma Darcy will be found like in the middle there, but there's nowhere to kind of accommodate them. Uh, so they've just been slotted into best actress. I wonder how they feel about that. Um, but I think it's doing a bit of a disservice to actors who do identify in that manner. And I think it's something that the Hollywood Foreign Press Association best look into, okay, in order to avoid further scandals on their long list of scandals that they already have. But in terms of their performance in House of the Dragon, it will come as no surprise, no shock to anyone that I think that they absolutely deserve to be here on this list. Are you kidding? House of the Dragon, we'll talk about it later, okay? But House of the Dragon mm, delivered some phenomenal performances for the year hands down we could have had you know emma darcy or uh the actress who portrays the younger version of um rhaenyra as well they could have both been here again over imelda staunton mind you um because they did phenomenal jobs on that show okay so next up we have best actor in a drama series and here the nominees are jeff bridges for the old man kevin costner for yellowstone diego luna for andor bob odenkirk for better call soul and adam scott for severance so again we're seeing the hollywood foreign press association be the hollywood foreign press association right with jeff bridges and kevin costner i'm not saying that any of these guys are bad in their respective shows i'm just saying that the fact that they are good on the show but also have that name recognition definitely gives them a shortcut to the nomination but in terms of who i would pick for this category um even though i've never watched the show i would just go with bob urgenkirk like, <laughs> I just want the Better Call Saul fans to leave me alone. <laughs> I would just go for Bob Odenkirk. He is always nominated for this stuff and he, like, hardly ever wins. I don't know if he's ever won any of these awards, probably, for, like, the earlier seasons. But Better Call Saul had its final season this year. So I would just g give it to him. <laughs> <laughs> and he's also been through a lot this year as well just give just give him the award just give him the award okay because otherwise the better call Saul fans will come for you so just give it to him already but i'm very happy to see diego luna on this list and also adam scott he had a great uh, role in severance he was absolutely phenomenal so well done to these lads but i think i think bob odenkirk just needs to take this one home for, for the sake of all that is right just give it to him already okay so the next category that we have up is a best supporting actress in a tv series once again the supporting actress category is not split between comedy musical uh, slash drama they're all kind of in one category for each gender again this is not very inclusive for non-binary people but here the nominees are elizabeth debicki for the crown hannah einbinder for hacks julia garner for ozark janelle james for abbott elementary and cheryl lee ralph for abbott elementary as well so again you have a mixture of comedic and dramatic performances here now if you were to ask me <laughs> and you're watching this so maybe you are curious uh if you if you were to ask me i i would be low-key tempted to give this to janelle james <laughs> for other elementary i think janelle james is such an icon on that show her ava her, her principal ava is so problematic like she she does no work 
99% of the time she'll do no work and she's just getting in everyone else's way but she'll drop like there'll be moments of clarity and wisdom and you're just like oh you've got to love Ava even though she sucks you still got to love her <laughs> and I think it's down to Janelle James's performance you know in the hands of any other actor she would have come across as very unlikable and just a, a horrible problematic character but because Janelle James has that charisma to her and she just delivers the lines the jokes so well and she just has that personality to her on the show i honestly i think she deserved the emmy for one you know in my opinion even over cheryl lee ralph with all due respect to her i would have picked janelle james over her um but just give her the golden glow <laughs> I would give her the Golden Globe if I had any say in the matter, but I don't. And I think it's pretty safe to say it's going to land in the hands of Elizabeth Debicki for The Crown, um, which would be deserving. In this case, I think her nomination makes sense. And I think she deserves, you know, the win if she is to get it because she was absolutely phenomenal in season five of The Crown, even though her storyline with Charles ended up being uh, one of my least favorite parts of that season. Oh my goodness, my apologies, guys. I seem to be losing my voice already which is strange because I haven't been filming for that long um but I'm just gonna try and take it easy and the next category that we have up is of course best supporting actor in a tv series and here the nominees are John Lithgow for The Old Man, Jonathan Price for The Crown, John Turturro for Severance, Tyler James Williams for Abbott Elementary and Henry Winkler for Barry. So first of all I do find it funny how this category seems to be the John category, <laughs> the category of Johns if you will, I think that's kind of cute um but first one up is John Lithgow and I haven't seen The Old Man so I can't comment on his performance there and next we have Jonathan Price in season five of The Crown and I'm so sorry but like no <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry but mm, I'm gonna have to call you out on that one uh Hollywood Foreign Press Association that makes no damn sense to me other than the fact that it's the crown being the crown um it makes no damn sense to me like um if you consider Matt Smith's portrayal of Prince Philip Tobias Menzies portrayal of Prince Philip putting that next to Jonathan Price's one I'm sorry but that's kind of insulting like let's not just give people nominations for the sake of giving them nominations although that's what they do that's what they do when you're a known actor they'll just hand you over a nomination for portraying a character that has the notoriety previously and it just pisses me off I don't think that Jonathan Price did anything spectacular this season I think he just repeated the same old lines that um Tobias Menzies delivered perfectly in the previous seasons and that's down to the writing to be fair but I don't think he added anything with his performance at all like I just no no <laughs> we need to put a stop to this now no he does not deserve to be there and then you have John Turturro for Severance I do think he deserves to be there that's fair I'll allow that one he was very good in Severance Tyler James Williams <laughs> Tyler James Williams in Abbott Elementary out of this list that's who I would give it to <laughs> I don't care. No one ever lie, I would give it to Tyler James Williams. Sorry. I don't think he's the shining star of Abbott Elementary. That's like Janine and Ava and them. But I think he's a nice counterbalance. He's a straight man and he does a really great job. And not to mention there are moments where you could see, you know, parts of the character that are a little bit unhinged. <laughs> And I think Tyler James Williams does a great job selling that. So I, listen, I would hand it over to him. But short of it going to Tyler James Williams, I would give it to Henry Winkler for Barry. Um, I actually watched Barry for the first time this year. I watched all three seasons and it's a phenomenal show. I remember starting it a few years back and not really clicking with it and I dropped it. But I started it all over again this year and it's really, really good. And I think Henry Winkler actually was his season this season to be fair. He was just a terrified mess. Um, so I'm actually, yeah, I'll give it to Henry Winkler. If I'm being fair, if I'm thinking with my head and not my heart, I would give it to Henry Winkler. But, you know, who wants to think with their head all the time? Just give it to Tyler James Williams. Who cares? <laughs> but also, I wanted to point out that there is a huge omission here once again, because where is Brian Tyree Henry? Again. Again, guys. <laughs> you missed him out not once, but twice. He was great in Causeway, and now you've missed him for Atlanta seasons three 
and four that's ridiculous to me like that is absurd i would have definitely had him be here instead of jonathan price i'm really upset by his omission once again because i think brian tyree henry had a hell of a year he was great in bullet train great in both seasons of atlanta and great in causeway so the fact that he hasn't gotten any recognition for his work this year is appalling to me but I digress let's move on to the next category okay so the next category up is a big one we have best drama series and here the nominees are better call saw the crown house of the dragon ozark and severance so this to me is a very predictable bunch of nominees right like i there's nothing really surprising here i just think it's a bit disappointing you know because this year had so much to offer in the tv landscape the fact that we don't really see how incredible this year was for television uh, be reflected in this nominees list it's kind of disappointing so when it comes to better call saw like i said i've never watched it but its fans are numerous <laughs> and powerful uh so i wouldn't be mad if it ended up going to the show especially because it had its final season this year i don't think the crown deserved it for season five i'm afraid i love the crown oh don't get it twisted i love the crown which is why i know that it's capable of so much better and this season unfortunately did not deliver on that the, the expectations were high the hype was real but i don't think it quite met those expectations i'm afraid so i wouldn't give it to the crown it probably is going to end up going to the crown anyways because the hollywood foreign press association <laughs> does whatever it wants but um i don't think it deserves it i'm afraid i'm so sorry the crown i love the crown but i don't think it deserves it this time around sorry babes <laughs> and then next we have house of the dragon this is the one that should win yeah now the reason why i'm not as excited is because it kind of brings me back to the days where game of thrones dominated every award season um and like we've been there we've done that right but i have to hold my hand up and say that house of the dragon was a good show like what do you want me to do <laughs> like house of the dragon was a superb show it had everything against it after the disaster that was season eight of game of thrones and it rose to the occasion the fact that it was a prequel didn't hamper it from creating this beautiful world amazing stories with incredible actors portraying these new fascinating characters so i have to hold my hands up and say that not only does it deserve to be on this list but it deserves to win <laughs> it deserves to win sorry um i would definitely give it to house of the dragon i love ozark as well i don't think this past season was the very best season of ozark that we've ever gotten though and when it comes to severance i think things are kind of building with severance <laughs> I, th I can see things emerging with severance but i i want the second season to be better than the first because even though i very much enjoyed the first season there were moments of dullness in my opinion so let's just hit the ground running with season two and let's see how it goes from there but i would give the award to better call saw before i gave it to severance if i'm being honest but all in all it has to go to house of the dragon sorry don't make the rules <laughs> okay so next up we're moving on to the musical slash comedy categories and first one up we have is best actress in a musical or comedy tv series and the nominees here are quinta brunson for abbott elementary Katie Cuoco for The Flight Attendant, Selena Gomez for Only Murders in the Building, Jenna Ortega for Wednesday, and Jean Smart for Hacks. So, <laughs> if you had asked me a month ago who I thought would win in this category, who I wanted to win in this category, I would have given you one answer and one answer alone, and that is Quinta Brunson. Yeah for Abbott Elementary without even thinking about it in fact I think I gave you that answer for the Emmy nominations list um earlier this year so I am team Quinta like don't get it twisted I am team Quinta Bunsen I think what she's done with Abbott Elementary is phenomenal I think her come up is inspiring I am all here for my good sis Quinta but you see it's a month later and <laughs> it's a month later and i've watched wednesday and you, you see how these things work like you could have it all like you could be on top of the world and then someone just comes crashing like, there's an iceberg just come crashing <laughs> in and that iceberg was jenna ortega who has dominated 
December. She has like ever since Wednesday has come out, this this young lady has has become a phenomena. Like that series has diff it's just hit different. <laughs> it's just hit completely different. It is a worldwide phenomena and she is at the center of it because I'm telling you, she carried that whole show on her capable shoulders. She carried that whole show. I don't care what anyone says, Wednesday is not a mind-blowingly phenomenal series it simply is not i think there are elements that are obviously very enjoyable and they very much caught on into the pop culture zeitgeist but in terms of the story in terms of the writing i think the middle episodes kind of blur together and the story isn't as compelling in those parts it has a very strong beginning a very strong ending but let's not forget that middle <laughs> let's not forget that middle that needs work okay not to mention the cgi we need a bigger budget for the CGI. <laughs> What's this Scooby-Doo mess? We need a bigger budget for the CGI, okay? But when you have someone like Jenna Ortega carrying the show with a phenomenal performance as Wednesday Adams, I mean, all of a sudden it's elevated. This, this is the importance of having a star lead and she has just catapulted herself to stardom and I think she completely deserves her nomination here and like I said, it's a month later, I would give it to her. <laughs> I think she should win, I think she will win. I would absolutely hand it to her because she just, she knocked out of the park, honestly. Nothing but respect. In terms of these other ladies, I think Jean Smart had her year last year with uh, season one of Hacks, so I think she'll be going home, you know, more than okay. She'll go home to her other Golden Globe. And then when it comes to Selena Gomez and Only Murders, this might be a bit controversial, please don't hate me, but I don't I think she's like that amazing on the show. <laughs> I think she has the opposite situation to Jenna Ortega where the show is much better than her performance and kind of elevates her performance as a result and the fact that she's surrounded by comedy legends like Martin Shaw and Steve Martin so I think that's what's working for her but in terms of like her character on on its own it, she's not like the most charismatic actress I'm so sorry like don't hate me for a Selena Gomez fan but she, I don't think she's doing like that much amazing stuff on the show. I think she's the straight man of the group. And also her character in general is very reserved and socially awkward. And unlike um, Tyler James Williams, who has those moments of like being quirky and has this like really interesting backstory that we only get hints of in, in various episodes. And when it comes to Selena Gomez's character, she's kind of just one note in my opinion. So, you know, she's nominated here because the others are, I guess. And she's very popular, you know, big name, recognition. Mission, um, and she does a pretty good job but like next to Jenna Ortega I'm sorry yeah, I, I, sorry the only two contenders for me here are Jenna Ortega and Quinta Brunson and like I said I am team Quinta all the way except for today <laughs> Okay, so the next category that we have up is Best Actor in a Comedy or Musical Series. And here the nominees are Donald Glover for Atlanta, Bill Hader for Barry, Steve Martin for Only Murders in the Building, Martin Short for Only Murders in the Building, and Jeremy Allen White for The Bear. So first of all, I just wanna give a huge round of applause or I guess tip my hat off to The Bear just as a show because I remember when it first came out and there were like rumblings of it. There were a couple of my subscribers that told me, you were like, Jean, you should really check out The Bear. And it was such an underrated show at that point. And then it finally came to Disney Plus here in the UK. And I think it's a Hulu show in America. And more people started to check it out and realize how much of a, a really great underrated series it is. And to the point where at this point in time, it's hardly underrated anymore. But um, I just think The Bear is fantastic a really classic small show delving into a really compelling character who is brilliantly portrayed by Jeremy Allen White and I am so happy for him that he got a role like this after doing a million seasons of Shameless which I also enjoyed mind you but you know Shameless came to an end I think last year or the year before and I'm, I'm glad to see him you know continuing to work on a very um, highly regarded series like The Bear and I don't know if they've announced there's going to be a season two but they, they should have they should <laughs> they should should have okay this should absolutely be a bear season two i don't think it's an expensive show to make so hulu like get to it now when it comes to this list i mm, 
if it wasn't for the fact that we got the final seasons of Atlanta this year, I would perhaps choose Jeremy Allen White. Um, because when it comes to Atlanta, I, I truly do think that Brian Tyree Henry <laughs> was better than Donald Glover this season. Like, for both seasons, season three and four. So, I the fact that he's not even nominated and Donald Glover is here is, like, annoying to me. But, you know, give it to Donald Glover then. <laughs> give it to Donald Glover because, you know, just, just for the sake of austerity. Like, just for the sake of awarding him for his incredible work on Atlanta overall. They often do that, right? Especially because it's the final season. I would give it to Donald Glover. Um, I think the Martins are going to cancel each other out. <laughs> um, and I think Bill Hader was great on Barry. Um, he's probably going to take this one home, honestly. But my personal favourites on this list would be Donald Glover and Jeremy Allen White. I would like to see them take it home. Uh, I would be disappointed with the Only Murders Boys because I just, I don't love... I don't adore that show. Sorry, another controversial take. I don't adore Only Murders, so I'm just like, eh. Uh, but I wouldn't be too shocked or too disappointed with Bill Hader taking it home because Barry season three was quite exceptional, to be fair. <laughs> Which perfectly leads us into the next category of best uh, comedy or musical TV series. And here the nominees are Abbott Elementary, The Bear, Hacks, Only Murders in the Building, and Wednesday. Day. Now, mind you, I've already done my categories and my nominees for the Genie Awards. So um, I'm looking at a very different list here. <laughs> I, I can tell you right here, right now, I'm looking at a very different list. I mean, there's a bit of overlap, but mm, these aren't, this isn't my list, okay? <laughs> this is yours list, not mine. And out of this list, I've seen all of them, by the way. I've actually watched, again, I'm much better at watching these TV shows than the films, which if you've watched my films video, you know that was abysmal. <laughs> I've seen all of these shows and out of them, oh, it's tough. I wouldn't pick Wednesday because I don't think it's a spectacular comedy. I don't think it's a spectacular show in general. I think it has issues, even though I found it very, very enjoyable and I did like it. Um, but I certainly wouldn't pick it for best comedy of the year. Are you kidding me? This year has been full of like genuine phenomenal comedies. Where is what we do in the shadow? What we do in the shadows? Where is our flag means death? Like what actual comedy shows that were amazing? Where are they? <laughs> Wednesday is not one of them, I'm sorry to say. Only Murders in the Building wasn't one of them either. I thought season one was better than season two and many of you guys will know I wasn't even the biggest fan of season one to begin with. Um, Hack season two had the same issue where I thought season one was much better. The Bear absolutely deserves to be here. I think that was a phenomenal show. I don't know if it was like ha ha funny but it's the golden globes it's the hollywood foreign press association like i said they do whatever they want to do <laughs> but in the interest of staying pure to the idea of comedy in this comedy and musical category out of the two that i really love i would pick abbott elementary i would give the win to abbott elementary but i wouldn't be mad if i saw the bear win and i wouldn't be super mad if i saw wednesday win but only murders would disappoint me and hacks would also disappoint me okay so now we're getting into the limited series and tv movie categories now there are a couple of brand new categories within this realm that have been added by the hollywood foreign press association and that is the supporting roles we have best supporting actress and best supporting actors uh, for the limited series or tv movie category um, which I think is fun, it's great, you're able to acknowledge more work, which is good, but it's also quite long, <laughs> and I'm not going to be covering them here today. But just to let you know, there are two extra uh, categories within this realm uh, that you can check out online, but the first one that we're going to be diving into in this video is Best Actor in a Limited Series or TV Movie, and the nominees here are Taron Egerton for Blackbird, Colin Firth for The Stair, case andrew garfield for under the banner of heaven evan peters for monster the jeffrey dahmer story and sebastian stan for pam and tommy so out of these five projects i've only seen three of them i haven't seen the staircase i didn't hear good things about it so i wasn't interested and as for monster i'm not that's not me 
<laughs> that is literally not me I'm not a true crime girly so that just never appealed to me but out of the three performances that I have seen in this category I think all three gentlemen did a great job I think Sebastian Stan was absolutely transformative as Tommy Lee and um, in Pam and Tommy he was really really good I wouldn't be surprised if he took this one home I don't think Taron Edgerton and Andrew Garfield are front runners really um but I, I would be happy with all three of these guys taking this home um I thought Taron Edgerton was phenomenal with uh Paul Walter Hauser who was nominated for best supporting um for limited series uh he was so good <laughs> he Paul Walter Hauser was on another level he was phenomenal in blackbird oh we'll talk about it we'll talk about it okay later down the line in in the genie awards but taron edgerton acted so well against him like he was all of us in those moments like reacting to paul waterhouse's character larry he he was us <laughs> when he was throwing up when he was appalled when he was horrified he was us and he did a great job of channeling all of those emotions so hats off to him um andrew garfield in um under the banner of heaven exploring the mormon community in what is it utah um that was also that's that's one of the shows that i watched this year that stuck with me for a long time it haunted me because like, it actually terrified me for some reason that and dope sick those are shows that like really just haunted me for ages and ages after i watched them i watched dope sick this year even though it came out last year um it doesn't qualify for any of these awards but dope sick was absolutely phenomenal if you haven't watched it with michael keaton um and under the banner of heaven kind of followed suit with that like true story that that just made me terrified and so now you understand why i could never watch a monster you know i could never watch a jeffrey dahmer series now please <laughs> i'm not built for that okay um but evan peters congrats you know this was one of the biggest shows of the year if not the biggest and he did a splendid job by all accounts you know from what i saw in the trailers as well so evan peters is great you know he's great in, in almost everything that he's in um and when he's given a chance to shine he will rise to that challenge so i'm not surprised to see him here either but in terms of my personal picks i would probably go for any three of the guys that I've seen Taron Edgerton Sebastian Stan or um, Andrew Garfield for sure they were just so so good in their respective shows and the next category up is best actress in a limited series or tv movie and the nominees here are Jessica Chastain for George and Tammy sounds very much like in the eyes of Tammy Faye which is funny because she won the Academy Award for that earlier this year Julia Garner for Inventing Anna oh that rhymes uh, Lily James <laughs> I'm losing my voice Lily James for Pam and Tommy Julia Roberts for Gaslit and Amanda Seyfried for The Dropout now I do know that earlier this year Amanda Seyfried was kind of the front runner in this category um I can't remember if she won the Emmy I think so I think she did win the Emmy right um and it's well deserved like this is another transformative performance as is lily james's although some of you guys will know <laughs> if you've watched my what i've been watching the one that i covered uh, pam and tommy in i think it was volume five or something um i mentioned <laughs> i mentioned how i'm not the biggest fan of lily james <laughs> i just don't like her i don't there's no reason uh, something about her face just annoys me it's so it's so biased it's so cruel it's so mean like this is this is something that i need to work on okay um but i just can't help it i do not like lily james for whatever reason uh so i wouldn't go for her personally which is unfortunate because uh, pam and tommy is the only show that i've actually watched the entirety of in this category i started watching inventing anna but i dropped it after like three episodes or so and i started watching the dropout and i dropped it after about three episodes as well so i can't even comment really on the rest of these performances but if i had to pick one it would probably be amanda seyfried i think that's the one that i would go for because i don't like lily james um but i think lily james was phenomenal in pam and tommy she should also get the award let me let me not be a bitch okay she should get the award for sure she was really really great on that show which brings us to the last category that we're going to be discussing in this video and that is best limited series or tv movie and here the nominees are 
Blackbird, Monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story, Pam and Tommy, the Dropout, and the White Lotus, Sicily. Now, this list doesn't really excite me. Again, um, it doesn't surprise me either, especially considering, you know, the actors who have been nominated in the acting categories. I think we pretty much see a reflection of that in this final category as well. And in this case, the only series that I've watched in their entirety are Blackbird and Pam and Tommy. And I would give it to Blackbird honestly I would give it to Blackbird because it was just so gripping from week to week like my entire family and I were just on the edge of our seats watching this damn show it was absolutely phenomenal and, and just so disturbing it, it really had like a huge impact on us each week and like I said the performances Taron Egerton and Paul Waterhouser just freaking knocked it out of the park and it was mostly these two just doing the heavy lifting with um the late Ray Liotta as well so to me Blackbird wins in this category um uh, Monster I haven't watched it like I said I can't handle that like Blackbird to me is the limit of what I can handle so the Jeffrey Dahmer story nah I'm good with that <laughs> I'm good okay uh Pam and Tommy was a little bit wonky and plus the fact that you know Pamela Anderson had so many issues with the show being made in the first place kind of tainted it a little bit so mm, you know I, I think it was a very good show very well made series but it's tainted uh, from that scandal and then you have the dropout which I personally couldn't finish so I can't really vouch for that one and then instead of inventing Anna which is represented in um, the acting category we have the White Lotus Sicily which is just a regular series surely it should be in the comedy category or the drama category but HBO has found a loophole to get it in limited series by having it be an anthology or whatever fine HBO <laughs> HBO doesn't want the White Lotus to compete with House of the Dragon or with Barry or with Succession so it's like oh it's a limited series okay <laughs> okay sis whatever you say again like just like the Hollywood Foreign Press Association HBO will do whatever the F it wants <laughs> um, but either way I would pick Blackbird in this category I have no idea who's gonna win maybe White Lotus if I had to guess um, because it is well liked by reviewers and, and critics to like but I personally would give it to Blackbird but that's it from me guys now that I told you guys my thoughts on the nominations list TV edition for the 2023 Golden Globes it's time for you guys to let me know what you thought of this list and the movie edition as well down in the comments below I don't know if I'm going to be posting this one before the film one or vice versa but either way you can catch both on my channel in the next coming days uh, please be sure to subscribe to catch your videos coming up including the upcoming genie awards okay i'm so excited but if you're interested in hearing my thoughts on the um best and brightest of 2022 for both films and television then you can go ahead and stay tuned for that thank you guys so so much for watching i really really appreciate it even though my throat is crackling and i'm losing my voice and i will see you in the next one bye